Hey friends, Lucian here with the Bullish Bears team. I uh, wanted to make this video on Thinkorswim's day trading setup and what I use uh, for uh, day trading, uh, the indicators I look for, how I set up my uh, Thinkorswim platform. Uh, to let you know right now, I actually kind of use two brokers right now. I use Thinkorswim really for my charting and for my scanning. Uh, and then I also use interactive brokers when I'm doing more shorting. Uh, interactive brokers is much better for shorting when day trading uh, than Thinkorswim because Thinkorswim is terrible at getting locates for shorting. Uh, so I use interactive brokers when I'm shorting, but for longing stocks and, uh, you know, Thinkorswim is the best. So they have the best platform here. So I'm going to try and make this video, <clears throat> you know, kind of simplified, not overwhelming. I'm not going to go through every little detail of it, but I'm going to point you in the direction of some references to kind of basically get your platform set up uh, the way mine looks now um, or however you would like it as close to the way mine is now and to make it easier for you. If you're not familiar with us, we do have a website called The Bullish Bears. Uh, we are a community called The Bullish Bears. We're actually on Facebook. If you go over to Facebook, you'll see we have a community of over 13,000 people on Facebook. So we have a great community of traders from around the world. So make sure you come and join us, number one, if you want to uh, be a part of a great community that loves, loves really helping each other out and sharing on a daily basis. But, um, you know, you can go over to our website, Bullish Bears. You can join us over here, but come up over here to our courses. And you're going to see right over here that we actually have a whole course dedicated to Thinkorswim that basically shows you kind of A to Z on how I get my platform the way uh, I have it set up in this video here. Again, I'm going to show you specifically uh, for how I do it for day trading, but you can do the same thing for swing trading as well. You just change the indicators uh, to kind of um, however you'd like to have them. Um, so number one, this is going to be more of a reference. I'm going to show you kind of how mine is set up to kind of give you an idea. But if you really want to get the big overall picture, come over, take our Think or Swim course. It's free. That'll really kind of give you... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, an idea of how to get everything set up. Again, so come join us over here in our community. Take our courses up here, specifically our Thinkorswim one if you want to learn more about Thinkorswim. But we do have a stock course, a momentum trading course, and an options course. Um, we have a watch list, so we actually email our watch list. We try to send it out every day, so make sure you uh, subscribe over here to get that. So again, you'll have a community that will help you. Uh, we send out a watch list. We do the best we can to send it out daily, so you'll be able to see what stocks that we're looking at you know, on our watch list daily. Uh, we have, again, the courses to really help you. And then if you go over to About, we actually have a free trade room that we offer. We have a few hundred uh, uh, trade uh, you know, people in our trade room where you can go and shadow them as well. So really, I want to start off this video pointing you uh, in the right direction of some resources that are free that we offer that could really help you get going. So again, uh, I don't want to overwhelm you in this video, but you have some resources here that we provide to you that can really kind of get you started. And also to last but not least, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. As you can see, we have lots of subscribers. Uh, but if you go over to our playlist, again, we're the Bullish Bears on YouTube as well. Go over to our playlist. You'll see a whole bunch of videos that we have set up. Here's all our Think or Swim videos. And we also have a whole day trading section as well. So again, the whole wealth of content to really get you started. So um, that's just some of the housekeeping, but <clears throat> I'm going to show you kind of just how I have my chart set up here a little bit, what indicators I use, kind of what I'm looking for when um, day trading. Again, everybody's preference is different, but you'll see here on my Thinkorswim platform here, you'll see I personally for myself for day trading, I have the one minute, the five minute in the daily chart set up. Again, if you want to know how I set up these charts and how uh, I got it to look this way in our Think or Swim course. I just break it all down. So I'm personally looking again, one minute, five minute in the daily. So the daily, I'm looking at the overall trend. I'm looking at support and resistance. Uh, by the way, I don't know why I have dries on here. This is a horrible, horrible stock. I shouldn't even allow, the, allow people to see it, but I actually want to teach you for a learning lesson with dries. If you ever hear anybody bring up the name of this garbage company, the only thing you should ever do with dries, if you're even thinking of uh, trading it, is only day trade it. So if you want a first lesson of day trading and you hear of the company dries, uh, it's the most garbage company on the planet. Don't trust it whatsoever and only day trade it if you do. 
or have very, very, very tight stop losses or uh, risk management in place trading the stock because it's garbage. Don't fall, don't fall into anybody's trap if they're trying to pump it. So again, just out of principle, I'm going to get rid of this stupid stock because it's a terrible stock. So let me go to a different one. So you'll see here I'm doing, you know, I'm across my screen, you'll see how I do areas of support and resistance and how uh, this is, I locate this under drawing. So if you click over to drawings and drawing tools, uh, I click on the price and this is where I could do like areas of support and resistance. So I can go and I can remove them. Uh, I can clear the drawing. So what I'm looking for every day is I have my chart set up like this. So this is kind of like my main chart. So what I'm doing is I am actually pulling up stocks that I'm looking at with creating my watch list at night. So when I'm creating my watch list at night, um, you'll see we, we try to do our best to send out a bunch of uh, watch list videos when we make our watch list. But this is my scan setup for my nightly watch list and how we do it. We look for stocks between $0.30 cents and $30, minimum of 500,000 shares <clears throat> with a minimum gain of 5%. So we look for stocks that hold their highs for the day. And when you hit scan, I'm making this video on a Sunday, you'll see there's uh, 36 potential plays, which is over here. I link my watch list. If you go into personal, you'll see here I have it under nightly scan. I click on it in here, and that's how I have my nightly scan in here. So every night, what I do is I go through all of these stocks, and I see which ones hold their highs from the day. And then I'll take whatever ones held their high for the day and that had good volume, and then I put them into an actual watch list. So I create, I go in, and I just edit this every day, and I'll just type in, you know, I'll just change the day, I'll remove the symbols, and then I'll just save it. And then I'll go through each one of these and whatever ones held their highs for the day, I'll add it onto my watch list over here. So I'm taking my nightly scan, adding it onto my watch list below, and these are the ones that I'm going to be targeting. Then every day, every morning, I'm uh, at looking through the pre-market between 8 to 9.30, and I'm seeing if any of these stocks have volume. If they have any news, you'll see news up here, if there's positive or negative news. And then I'm watching what's happening in the pre-market. Is it junk going up? Is it going down? Why? Is there a news catalyst? Um, <clears throat> I'm also looking at stocks, ideally, that are low float stocks. So ideally, stocks that are under 20 million, those, those are really low float, but really kind of up to 50 million. Um, that still They still move pretty decent. I don't not trade ones that are over 50 million, but they have to have a really good catalyst because they move kind of slowly. And the whole idea with day trading is you want stocks that move up and down um, so you can kind of get in, get out, get your profit, um, and not just be sitting there waiting forever. So again, I have my chart set up kind of like this. You'll see my one, my five minute, the daily. I create my my nightly watch list. Again, if you want to know more how we do this, uh, take our thing, our swim chorus. It'll show you how we do this. Uh, then we build our watch list. Down here, I have other uh, scanners that only work when the market's open. I have a two candle gap up, a two candle gap down. I also have a new high scanner, as well as I use trade ideas, which is an incredible scanner as well. So I have all my scanners so that if something on my watch list isn't moving or it's taking time, it's not hitting me, I have these other scanners in my trade idea scanner as well. Okay. So then what I also do is I have multiple screens set up um, where I have, if you can see here, um, I have like four or five screens where I then have the same thing you just saw, one minute, five minute, and the daily, and I'll watch three stocks at a time on each screen. I have this set up on two or three screens. So basically, you'll see I have um, my screen set up like this. You'll see I have a lot less. I don't have volume. I don't have RSI or MACD. Um, I'll show you the indicators I do use. It's just out of preference. The more, kind of what happens when you're day trading, the better of a day trader you become, the less indicators that you eventually start to use. So you'll start off using indicators like RSI, MACD, TTM Squeeze, Bollinger Bands, Parabolic SARS, and then eventually you'll kind of just scale things back down to uh, candlesticks, volume, uh, support, resistance, VWAP, and like moving average lines. That's really kind of all you really need. But what I do is I go from those multiple charts. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on those charts that I just showed you, see if something's moving. If something hits me, then I'll come up and I'll pull up the symbol over here, or I'll click on it on my watch list if it's running on my watch list. And I kind of just scroll through here 
and then I'll start to see things and then I'll you know again I'll chart areas of support and resistance I'll do you know like I'll put lines you know above or below map out my support resistance see what's happening um, and then I have my drawings synchronized so they go through all my charts so basically as long as you have your drawing set as default whenever I put support and resistance up here it kind of brings it up here so I kind of just do this throughout the morning and as things are going okay I if you can see down here I'm gonna kind of show you the indicators I use in a second here but you'll see I have again the one the five and the daily I have level two over here which is really not moving whatsoever now because the markets not open so I have my level two checked off I have my time in sales as well so level two shows you the buyers and the sellers uh, so bid is the buyers ask is the sellers if there's more uh, sellers than bidders um, that means it's driving the price down if there's more buyers rather than sellers it's driving the stock up <coughs> so you'll see a whole bunch of the different um, uh, I can't even think of it right now. You'll see a whole bunch of the different, uh, what do you call these? I, I can't even think of it. You'll see not in New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, NARCA, ARCA. You'll see all the different, uh, I, can't even, I can't even think of the platforms or the the broker, whatever, that, that's buying and selling your stock. I can't even think of the term right now. My mind's going blank. But you'll see a whole bunch of them right over here, and they're moving throughout the morning. That's all under level two. Um, so you'll see, again, all of the... Um, you know different buyers and sellers over here and then once the orders go through you'll see it under time and sales all of them over here so I'm kinda just watching you know what's happening number one you know I look at see when you see shares over here thinkorswim doesn't have a, an exact float tab shares about as close as you can get with um, to float with thinkorswim so go to a, a, a site like Yahoo Finance to really get the float uh, again, but shares gives you a little bit. It's kind of close to float. So usually think or swim shares are higher than what the actual float is. So if I see something, you know, close to 20 million, like this one right here, 21,199 for shares, chances are the float might be under 20 million. So I kind of gauge it over here. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm seeing again, is there a news catalyst? I'm seeing the patterns, what's happening. I'm looking at level two in time and sales. I'm looking in the pre-market as if it's overextended um, or if it's selling off. I'm watching the patterns to form. I'm watching the candlesticks. So my first line of defense is candlesticks. And then I'm going up here. And these are the indicators that I use with Thinkorswim. If you look under my studies here, you'll see on my one minute, I do uh, the 9 EMA and the 20 EMA. And I also do VWAP. The other thing you could do on here if you'd like is the 13 EMA. It's just a matter of some people love the 9 and the 20. Some love the 13, which is the in-between. It's all a matter of your preference. On my one-minute chart, I do the 9 EMA and the 20 EMA and uh, VWAP. If you want to learn more about these, just type in these terms over on a site like investopedia.com. You'll learn about them. But VWAP is, you know, so these are the average lines. So basically, when, you know, price moves one way or the other, price tends to go um, tends to gravitate back to those moving average lines so if a price is overextended uh, let me see if there's an example you know when a price moves all the way up like this at some point it's going to want to kind of move back before it either goes up or go back down again and vice versa if a stock kind of sells off it kind of wants to go back so that's how my one minute is set up you'll see in my studies on my five minute I actually have uh, the 13 EMA so it's kind of more of it's a little bit more of a time frame you know it's not as immediate as the one minute so I'm kind of seeing the pattern form I'm watching the 13 EMA that's just what I like again you can have the 9 and the 20 here it's all a matter of your preference but the 9 the 20 and the 13 are the most popular exponential moving average uh, lines or otherwise known as EMAs I also have the simple moving average of 50 and the 200 simple moving average um, it's a little bit more slower than the exponential move, exponential moving average, but uh, traders really pay attention to the simple moving average lines as well. And the 50 and the 200 are pretty much the most popular, as well as the 100 simple moving average, but really the 50 and the 200. I also have VWAP set up over here as well. So that's really how I have my, um, my chart set up from the one minute and five minute. 
And then I also have on my daily, you'll see I have the 50 and the 200 simple moving average and the 13 exponential moving average. Really, again, the 13 kind of just, <clears throat> you know, kind of gives you the overall trend. Nine's a little bit quicker. Um, 20 is a little bit slower than the 13, but again, it's all a matter of your preference. And that's how I have mine set up. The one, the five, and the daily, those are my indicators that I personally use with level two in time and sales. Now you could also say, well, what the heck? How come you don't have RSI, otherwise known as relative strength indexed or MACD? Again, it's all a matter of your preference. I'll show you a chart that has that kind of set up. Um, Here's a one day chart here. I don't really use this one, but kind of show you here. This right here is RSI. So if you um, click over, I don't have the color. Let me just change the color here to studies. Uh, you'll see here, just type in RSI if you'd like to add it and you'll have RSI over here. I'll change the color just to show you a little bit lighter. There's RSI. So when a stock gets overextended, uh, so that's, you know, it's the whole battle of the buyers and sellers, right? When a stock goes up too far, profit taking happens and then stocks fall back down. When stocks sell off too high and they go below here, so you'll see above 70 is when it's overbought and below 30 is when a stock's oversold. So usually when a stock's oversold, the buyers start to come in. When it's overbought, sellers kind of take place and you know kind of drive the price back down. So it's a battle of buyers and sellers. But if you want to add RSI, that's another very popular indicator, as well as if you look here at MACD. Uh, MACD is also very popular, and you'll see MACD is right down here. Uh, those are your other really two of the most popular indicators. I don't have these really on my charts because I've kind of gauged to see when a stock, the further a stock goes away from the moving average lines, you can kind of tell where, you know, the further away it is over here, it's overbought. And the further it is down here and over these areas, you can see it's oversold. So, you know, they're kind of like at some point going to start pulling back. Uh, so RSI and MACD are other very popular indicators that people use. Uh, but again, the more that you day trade, um, the more uh, that uh, you start to kind of remove a lot of these indicators and you really realize that, um, you know, the most, really all you need is really volume. Again, volume is most important, followed by with candlesticks. So candlesticks, volumes, patterns, uh, whatever the candlestick patterns are forming. Uh, areas of uh, re uh, support and resistance, followed by the exponential exponential moving averages, otherwise known as EMAs, simple moving averages, otherwise known as SMAs, as well as VWAP. That's really all you kind of need. But if you want the comfort of RSI and MACD, great, add that on. But level two, again, level two with time and sales and seeing what orders are coming through is is extremely important. So really, that's how I look for every day. I have my watch list. I go through them every morning. I look for news catalysts. I look for stocks that ideally have a low float below 20 million shares. I go up to 50 million. Uh, but again, it all depends what the catalyst is. There could be a stock that has 100 or 200 many million float that could be extremely overbought or extremely oversold, might have a news catalyst, and it might run that day. But under 20 million, you're going to get bigger price movement. You know, up to 50 million, pretty decent. Above that, much slower. So it just, you know, it's stock's going to be a little bit slower. These low float stocks are more volatile. Once the market opens, like as you can see, I'll have uh, a couple screens set up. If you don't have multiple screens like this, it's okay. Eventually, just, you know, just be comfortable looking at one screen. Set your screen up this way. You can kind of go up here and kind of set your screens up however you'd like. You can do it like this. You can do it like this. You can kind of really have your screens however you'd like them and really kind of tailor it to whatever way you'd like with Thinkorswim to get it set up this way. But um, that's really kind of the process. Those are the indicators that I use. Again, it's all a matter of your preference and trading style.